the internet and we're going to go to the boring world of all that other stuff that we were already supposed to be doing before the internet ever showed up to begin with. Are we going to yell for him? Right? We're yelling. Come look over here. All right, Michael, tell us just a little about yourself. Sorry, guys. I've been in the uh, business uh, roughly since 2006. I come from a technical background, and um, basically, my um, you know, technical skills is what helped me advance forward in the uh, internet marketing. Yeah. 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 So, tell us your story real quick. Well, I guess, as I mentioned, I come from a technical background, and, um, and when I got my license back in 2005, I went out. I had no idea. And um, I live in this gated community where we're about to turn over to the homeowners association, and um, they, you know, during the uh, transition meetings, they're asking people, you know, for assistance. And so I went to a couple of meetings, and um, they were looking for somebody to provide a website. I raised my hand and said, "Well, I could do that," and but I had no clue how to do a website because I was a hardware uh, person. And so I googled um, a homeowners association websites, and um, I had one within two weeks. But I had ulterior motives. Um, within uh, about 30 days. The uh, transition team uploaded um, 900 emails, and uh, that was very powerful because um, I was able to look back at and take the emails, and I created a, um, an email monthly market report for that specific community. And within, um, I think it was um, eight months, I grabbed 20% market share. Wow! And I said, "Wow, this works!" So I was able to take that model and move it down to the next gate community, the next one. Well, let's walk. Let's walk specifically through what you did. Let's just kind of go step by step through that. So let's go back and say, just from a practical standpoint, um, so how do you create a farming system? Well, you have to definitely have to have a database um, to store your stuff, so whatever that may be, the edge or whatever you prefer to use. Um, and I just gave you a good example of my first one, but some of the other communities I wanted to target or farm, um, they already had their, um, their websites. So um, as I was moving to other communities and uh, trying to obtain listings, uh, one of the best resources is I was asking for their own homeowners directly. And um, I was very strong because a lot of people, most of them, pick to more times than not. So I'd copy it and, and use it. And the best thing is if uh, there's an expired listing coming along, I had the phone numbers or cell numbers and they're another address too. Your goal is to create a database. Absolutely. You, you measure the success of your business from the beginning of the size of the database. Yes. Okay. And you're doing it by geographic area. Yeah, well, you break it geographic area, but like, uh, we farm in Benin Springs area, so it's called Coconut Point. It's just the name of the geographic area, but I, I draw it down to the gated community, specific gated communities. Okay. Okay. So you're using any anything that you can, and the express purpose is to obtain emails. That's what you want. You want emails. You have how many right now? Do you think twenty-four thousand? Okay. And that's a uh, twenty-two communities. Uh, lowest one being four hundred. The, the largest one uh, roughly two thousand. Um, just out of curiosity, what's your, what's your most effective way to get in there? Getting them out? Well, um, I have a service that um, I have constant contact with one of those types of services that um, we have a template um, and, you know, it's, it's static. The template for the most part, but I just update um, what I interpret the market to be um, for that month, the upcoming month, and um, also I um, put direct links to a um, uh, local newspaper of positive upbeat articles that are going on that day or um, that month. Okay, well I jumped the gun a little bit. Let's just go back. So how do you create a farming system? Right? The second thing you said was develop a community specific monthly market report. Tell me about that. Well, and that's just it with your brand, as you see me, is that um, you know, I come from uh, as I mentioned the Greater Coconut Point area. Um, we have the brand um, and it's very consistent. We're very consistent uh, getting it out uh, the first week of each month. We've been doing this since 2006 and we haven't missed it. And it makes this it is a print. Not Zima. Okay, as well. Yeah. Yeah. Zima. Um, as you see on, on the sample there, on the right-hand side, most of that is static. And what I just changed is the intro on the left. And I don't even write that anymore. I have a ghostwriter that writes it. You know, one of the, I'm just going to make a sidebar comment here, Coach. Um, at the end of the day, the biggest challenge that an entrepreneur has is having just enough discipline to do something consistently until it earns them enough money to hire someone who likes to do it consistently. consistently. <laughs> And that's the big challenge for an entrepreneur. It's not letting go. 
Well, it, but it's tough letting go, but it's actually, for most people, it's tough to get started. It, it, well, because they don't like to do it. They didn't get into real estate to do that. They didn't say, woo man, that's why I got this job. I like that. They didn't do that. So that's, a, that's to me, it's just a challenge. Right? Um, so the keys are keep a consistent schedule and give relevant and current data. It's, it's a rich relevant content to each gate community. So out of 22 communities, we have 22, 22 different templates. Yeah. And, and that's where I found out just that drilling down to that community has been so, so good for us. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So the next one is educate through blogging, uh, your website through articles. You were alluding to that. Yes. Um, you know, we do have a blog, but we update a lot of our monthly market reports, as you see here. This is um, really cool. Uh, from the back end, we can see who clicks on what. And every time we send out um, a mar monthly market report, we look at the back end and we see um, the market report and the close data is what um, the readership is looking at. And they really want to know what's going on in their community. Um, at the same time, we have back links to our website, which is also that helps with search engine optimization. Um, when I send out um, the 24,000, you can see a spike in my back end, my website gets, and also the search performances. So it definitely helps. Wow. Right. Next, um, you know, we're advertising on our, our listing, which is good about this on the market report. Um, every listing for that community, uh, people can click on it. But what a lot of the readership doesn't know is that we can go in the back end and see by the email who's looked at that listing. So we go take that and we drill down even further. We take those emails and send a follow-up email. Hey, uh, I saw you look at uh, you know one two three Happy Street. Um, can we set a showing plan? Want more information? What can we do for you? And, um, and that helps us you know, bring people in closer into our web and into our network. Um, you know, it's, um, you know, again, it has to be consistent though every time we do it, because I have noticed some of um, my uh, people that are on um, our listings have tested the system to see if we're making those follow-up emails. So. Let me just stop and ask a basic question. Are you calling 24,000 people? No. Oh, <laughs> um, basically what I'm doing is I'm, uh, I'm in prospecting and lead generating every day. They're called Smile and Diamond. And um, we, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I'm calling the, the expires and um, trying to get a drum a new business and also calling all people that have been off the market for the last uh, six months, 12 months. So you're calling, but this program of farming that you're describing to us today is is not calling. No, it's there, not. There's no way you can even put a dent in 24,000 people. No, but, but if I need to call them, you have that information specific for cell phone. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, and, you know, the, um, I think when I go on a listing presentation or um, I actually speak to a, a, a prospective listing of a, a person that wants to list their property. They already know me. They've been uh, receiving my information for so long. I don't have to sell them myself. They want to know what I can do for them now. Uh, create a city monthly custom newspaper. What does that mean? Well, it, it, this is just one spoken wheel, the uh, spoken wheel, the email marketing. Uh, and I don't, I'm not a big fan of postcards. We have a custom newspaper um, that's. Um, it has a, it's 20 pages and it goes out every other month and it, it features my uh, clients listings and a lot of my preferred vendors and we print the market report also to the, um, the target farm communities that we send out to. Um, I don't mail 24,000, I only mail 10,000 every other month. So who, how do you pick the 10,000? Um, based on communities that we want to turn the heat up on a little bit. I do use some, uh, do use some postcards but um, not a lot but I, um, I just stagger them. So we sit down at a marketing meeting, we have a marketing meeting once a week and uh, we, we talk what we're going to uh, discuss in the email in the newspaper. Gotcha. Uh, this, is, um, this is what we're doing. Um, the API, our API is we're using the Keller Williams API, uh, API for a while. And um, it wasn't getting the, uh, the return that we wanted to before. And so what we did, my assistant Justin, is that uh, he actually went in and took the time to customize it. There you go. And it's, I'm getting so many dramatic results by custom, customizing it because I know that my clients want to see it here. Give us an example of what customizing means. Well, um, the products and services that I provide, um, things that they, I believe they it's want not to see. No, no. And again, the, with the uh, email banner and um, a link back to the website shows a lot of products and services where they click on it. It's uh, very strong. So now, who is this going to? This is. Um, these are going to the. Um, expires on um, people that they go back in 12 months or so and because right now as we talked about a little bit earlier this is a little bit harder to come by if i have their email they're going out on the email 8x8 if i don't have any um, uh, phone communication with them 
we do put them on a print 8 by 8 so it's really 16 by 16. Gotcha. But there's, and there's phone calls. Uh, there's phone calls mixed in there too. Tell me about drip campaign. Anytime uh, a client, buyer or seller, touches out to us you know, via a um, phone call, um, letter, uh, specifically email, we take the email and we drip them through the IDX feed, through the back end of our website, properties of relevance of what they want to see. And last one? Uh, manage prospect and smile and dial in. The phone's so important to me, can't get away from it. Um, but, but this isn't in, is this, this isn't in your farm or it is, these are the FISBOs and expires in those gated communities? Exactly. Okay. Yes. So that's where you're targeting all of this? Uh, yes. If, um, if I don't have the email list in that community, I'm not far, I don't try it. I'm not marketing at all. So you're really doing more than FISBOs and expires? Basically. Yeah, pretty much so, yeah. All right. Uh, thank you. See, I'm going to say thank you now. <laughs> Uh, all right, Ryan. Uh